in the 70s, I was quite... I was a good friend of Tony Bramwell. Anyway, anyway, t Tony and I were very good friends, drinking partners. So much so that we actually banned ourselves from going out drinking for months because it was always bloody chaos. There was always something going wrong and things happening and nonsense. Anyway, one day Tony said to me, what are you doing Friday lunchtime? I said, I'm coming out with you. He said, good. He said, I want you to meet somebody. He said, I'm having lunch with Brian Morrison. I said, who's Brian Morrison? He said, I'm having lunch with Brian Morrison and Adrian Rudd. And he said, we're going to the Guinea. And, and he said, I'll meet you there at one o'clock. So I got there about, I was 12. They were there already. And to cut a long story short, between the three bottles of white, two of red, and one or two of champagne, somebody put two and two together. This one, it was October 1986. 1977, somebody had worked out that it was the first weekend of Freddie Laker, Skytrain, and the Jam were playing CBGBs on the Saturday night. Now, I've got nothing to do with the Jam at all. I was working for, I can't remember who I was working for, Ariola, I think, BMG label. So we, so we all caught the Skytrain. Murray got his drive around, we got in his car, I don't, I don't know Brian Morrison at all, we got in his car, we bought our tickets, for, I think they took me to the embassy to get in a pissed state to get a visa, and, and we, off, we went to Gatwick, completely mortal drunk, how would they let us on an aeroplane, I don't know, but nevertheless we got on the aeroplane and we sat along the back row, where we continued this party, and then... Um, with them, I must have fallen asleep because I woke up with a chronic stiff neck dribbling on Brian's shoulder and I thought, I, I, I know him from somewhere. <laughs> you know, it was that moment. And at that moment they announced that the plane, because of a bad storm, the plane was going to land at some aerodrome, airfield somewhere, and we were going to be hopelessly delayed. Now remember, this is Freddie Laker. So we ping the pinger and one of the stewardesses came over and I said before you go any further I said how many more bottles of that red wine have you got because it was free with the meal she said I don't know I said well I'll tell you what we'll buy every single bottle you've got for a pound a bottle okay so she went well there's probably about eight or nine but I said but just bring it back here I said what else have you got tucked away there have you got anything else you've got some bugs yeah bring that over as well so we cornered the market on, on, on the, and we, this plane, this journey, it was my first time I'd ever been to New York. This flight took 12 hours. We, I can't tell you what state we're in. Well, you can imagine, because we weren't in a particularly good state to begin with. Anyway, we, got, we went to New York and we went to see, went to CBGB's and we, and we just, and I was overwhelmed by Brian Morrison. Who, who I thought was great, and he came out and took us all out to dinner on the Saturday night because somebody had just told him, it, Cora had probably just told him on the telephone that the Bee Gees were going to put one of his tracks that he published on the B-side of what was Night Fever. He said, I've just made 30 grand, and that was when 30 grand was a lot of money, you know. So I've just made 30 grand, so I'll buy dinner. And... Uh, Anyway, the, I'll never forget, the next, on Monday morning, we, got, we caught the, the, uh, the Freddy back on Sunday night, and I arrived in the office at 9.30 on Monday morning in the clothes that I'd left on, because I'd got no luggage or anything, and I looked like shit, and somebody said to me, you look terrible. I said, you would do if you had been where I've been this weekend.